Football is a family of team sports that involve, to varying degrees, kicking a ball to score a goal. Unqualified, the word football normally means the form of football that is the most popular where the word is used. Sports commonly called football include association football, known as soccer in North America, Ireland, Australia, and South Africa, gridiron football, specifically American. Football or Canadian football, Australian rules football, rugby union and rugby league, and Gaelic football. These various forms of football share, to varying degrees, common origins, and are known as football codes. There are a number of references to traditional, ancient, or prehistoric ball games played in many different parts of the world. Contemporary codes of football can be traced back to the codification of these games at English public schools during the 19th century, itself an outgrowth of medieval football. The expansion and cultural power of the British Empire allowed these rules of football to spread to areas of British influence outside the directly controlled empire. By the end of the 19th century, distinct regional codes were already developing, Gaelic football, for example, deliberately incorporated the rules of local traditional football games in order to maintain their heritage. In 1888, the Football League was founded in England, becoming the first of many professional football associations. During the 20th century, several of the various kinds of football grew to become some of the most popular team sports in the world. The various codes of football share certain common elements and can be grouped into two main classes of football, carrying codes like American football, Canadian football, Australian football, rugby union, and rugby league, where the ball is moved about the field while being held in the hands or thrown, and kicking codes such as association football and Gaelic football, where the ball is moved primarily with the feet, and where handling is strictly limited. Two teams usually have between 11 and 18 players, some variations that have fewer players, five or more per team, are also popular. A clearly defined area in which to play the game. Scoring goals or points by moving the ball to an opposing team's end of the field and either into a goal area, or over a line. Goals or points resulting from players putting the ball between two goalposts. The goal or line being defended by the opposing team. Players using only their body to move the ball, i.e. no additional equipment such as bats or sticks. In all codes, common skills include passing, tackling, evasion of tackles, catching, and kicking. In most codes, there are rules restricting the movement of players offside, and players scoring a goal must put the ball either under or over a crossbar between the goalposts. There are conflicting explanations of the origin of the word football. It is widely assumed that the word football, or the phrase football, refers to the action of the foot kicking a ball. There is an alternative explanation, which is that football originally referred to a variety of games in medieval Europe that were played on foot. There is no conclusive evidence for either explanation. The Chinese competitive game Kujo, resembles modern association football. It existed during the Han Dynasty and possibly the Qin Dynasty, in the 2nd and 3rd centuries BC, attested by descriptions in a military manual. The Japanese version of Kujo is Kamari, and was developed during the Asuka period. This is known to have been played within the Japanese imperial court in Kyoto from about 600 AD. In Kamari, several people stand in a circle and kick a ball to each other, trying not to let the ball drop to the ground, much like Kipi Api. The ancient Greeks and Romans are known to have played many ball games, some of which involved the use of the feet. The Roman game Harpastum is believed to have been adapted from a Greek team game known as Pisigma Kappa Upsilon Rho Omicron, Episkyros, or Phi Alpha Iota Nu Nu Delta Alpha, Phanindo, which is mentioned by a Greek playwright, Antiphans, 388-311 BC, and later referred to by the Christian theologian Clement of Alexandria, c. 150, c. 215 AD. These games appear to have resembled rugby football. The Roman politician Cicero, 106-43 BC, describes the case of a man who was killed whilst having a shave when a ball was kicked into a barber's shop. Roman ball games already knew the air-filled ball, the phallus. Episkyros is described as an early form of football by FIFA. There are a number of references to traditional, ancient, or prehistoric ball games, played by indigenous peoples in many different parts of the world. For example, in 1586, men from a ship commanded by an English explorer named John Davis went ashore to play a form of football with Inuit in Greenland. There are later accounts of an Inuit game played on ice, 
called Uxac Tak. Each match began with two teams facing each other in parallel lines, before attempting to kick the ball through each other team's line and then at a goal. In 1610, William Strachey, a colonist at Jamestown, Virginia recorded a game played by Native Americans, called Pasaiman. Pasukwakahawug, a game similar to modern-day association football played amongst Amerindians, was also reported as early as the 17th century. Games played in Mesoamerica with rubber balls by indigenous peoples are also well documented as existing since before this time, but these had more similarities to basketball or volleyball, and no links have been found between such games and modern football sports. Northeastern American Indians, especially the Iroquois Confederation, played a game which made use of net rackets to throw and catch a small ball, however, although it is a ball goal foot game, lacrosse, as its modern descendant is called, is likewise not usually classed as a form of football. On the Australian continent several tribes of indigenous people played kicking and catching games with stuffed balls which have been generalized by historians as Marn Grook, Jab Wurung for game ball. The earliest historical account is an anecdote from the 1878 book by Robert Broff Smith, The Aborigines of Victoria, in which a man called Richard Thomas is quoted as saying, in about 1841 in Victoria, Australia, that he had witnessed Aboriginal people. Playing the game, Mr. Thomas describes how the foremost player will drop kick a ball made from the skin of a possum and how other players leap into the air in order to catch it. Some historians have theorized that Marne Grook was one of the origins of Australian rules football. The Maori in New Zealand played a game called Kiorahi consisting of teams of seven players play on a circular field. Divided into zones, and score points by touching the Pope, boundary markers, and hitting a central tupu or target. These games and others may well go far back into antiquity. However, the main sources of modern football codes appear to lie in Western Europe, especially England. Mahmud al Kashgari in his Divan Lugat al Turk, described a game called Tepak among Turks in Central and East Asia. In the game, people try to attack each other's castle by kicking a ball made of sheep leather. The Middle Ages saw a huge rise in popularity of annual Shrove-tide football matches throughout Europe, particularly in England. An early reference to a ball game played in Britain comes from the 9th century Historia Britonum, attributed to Nineas, which describes a party of boys, playing at ball. References to a ball game played in northern France known as La Sole or Chole, in which the ball was propelled by hands, feet, and sticks, date from the 12th century. The early forms of football played in England, sometimes referred to as mob football, would be played in towns or between neighboring villages, involving an unlimited number of players on opposing teams who would clash en masse, struggling to move an item, such as inflated animals' bladder to particular geographical points, such as their opponent's church, with play taking place in the open space between neighboring parishes. The game was played primarily during significant religious festivals, such as Shrovetide, Christmas, or Easter, and Shrovetide games have survived into the modern era in a number of English towns. The first detailed description of what was almost certainly football in England was given by William Fitzstephen in about 1174-1183. He described the activities of London youths during the annual festival of Shrove Tuesday, after lunch all the youth of the city go out into the fields to take part in a ball game. The students of each school have their own ball, the workers from each city craft are also carrying their balls. Older citizens, fathers, and wealthy citizens come on horseback to watch their juniors competing, and to relieve their own youth vicariously. You can see their inner passions aroused as they watch the action and get caught up in the fun being had by the carefree adolescents. Most of the very early references to the game speak simply of ball play or playing at ball. This reinforces the idea that the games played at the time did not necessarily involve a ball being kicked. An early reference to a ball game that was probably football comes from 1280 at Ulgham, Northumberland, England, Henry, while playing at ball, ran against David. Football was played in Ireland in 1308, with a documented reference to John McCrokin, a spectator at a football game at Newcastle, County Down being charged with accidentally stabbing a player named William Bernard. Another reference to a football game comes in 1321 at Shudham, Norfolk, England, during the game at ball as he kicked the ball, a lay friend of his, ran against him and wounded himself. In 1314, Nicholas de Farndon, Lord Mayor of the City of London issued a decree banning football in the French. 
used by the English upper classes at the time. A translation reads, For as much as there is great noise in the city caused by hustling over large footballs rage rise de grosses pellets de pee in the fields of the public from which many evils might arise which God forbid, we command and forbid on behalf of the king, on pain of imprisonment, such game to be used in the city in the future. This is the earliest reference to football. In 1363, King Edward III of England issued a proclamation banning, handball, football, or hockey, coursing and cockfighting, or other such idle games, showing that football, whatever its exact form in this case, was being differentiated from games involving other parts of the body, such as handball. A game known as football was played in Scotland as early as the 15th century, it was prohibited by the Football Act 1424 and although the law fell into disuse it was not repealed until 1906. There is evidence for schoolboys playing a football ball game in Aberdeen in 1633, some references cite 1636, which is notable as an early allusion to what some have considered to be passing the ball. The word pass in the most recent translation is derived from huck percut, strike it here, and later, repercute palam, strike the ball again, in the original Latin. It is not certain that the ball was being struck between members of the same team. The original word translated as goal is metum, literally meaning the pillar at each end of the circus course in a Roman chariot race. There is a reference to a get hold of the ball before another player does, priripi ili palem si passes. Ajira, suggesting that handling of the ball was allowed. One sentence states in the original 1930 translation throw yourself against him, age, objistii ili. King Henry IV of England also presented one of the earliest documented uses of the English word football, in 1409, when he issued a proclamation forbidding the levying of money for football. There is also an account in Latin from the end of the 15th century of football being played at Canton, Nottinghamshire. This is the first description of a kicking game and the first description of dribbling, tee he game at which they had met for common recreation is called by some the football game. It is one in which young men, in country sport, propel a huge ball not by throwing it into the air but by striking it and rolling it along the ground, and that not with their hands but with their feet, kicking in opposite directions. The chronicler gives the earliest reference to a football pitch, stating that, the boundaries have been marked and the game had started. A football, in the sense of a ball rather than a game, was first mentioned in 1486. This reference is in Dame Juliana Berner's book of St. Albans. It states, a certain rounda instrument to play with, it is an instrument for the foot and then it is called a in Latin pila pedalis, a fitable. A pair of football boots were ordered by King Henry VIII of England in 1526. Women playing a form of football was first described in 1580 by Sir Philip Sidney in one of his poems, Time there is for all, my mother often says, when she, with skirts tucked very high, with girls at football plays. The first references to goals are in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. In 1584 and 1602 respectively, John Norton and Richard Carew referred to goals in Cornish hurling. Carew described how goals were made, they pitched two bushes in the ground, some eight or ten foot asunder, and directly against them, ten or twilly twelve score off, other twain in like distance, which they term their goals. He is also the first to describe goalkeepers and passing of the ball between players. The first direct reference to scoring a goal is in John Day's play The Blind Beggar of Bethnal Green, performed circa 1600, published 1659 I'll play a goal at Camp Ball, an extremely violent variety of football, which was popular in East Anglia. Similarly in a poem. In 1613, Michael Drayton refers to win the ball to throw, and drive it to the goal, in squadrons forth they go. In the 16th century, the city of Florence celebrated the period between Epiphany and Lent by playing a game which today is known as Calcio Storico, historic kickball, in the Piazza Santa Croce. The young aristocrats of the city would dress up in fine silk costumes and embroil themselves in a violent form of football. For example, Calcio players could punch, shoulder charge, and kick opponents. Blows below the belt were allowed. The game is said to have originated as a military training exercise. In 1580, Count Giovanni de Bardi di Vernio wrote Discorso Sopra el Giuaco del Calcio Fiorentino. This is sometimes said to be the earliest code of rules for any football game. The game was not played after January 1739, 
until it was revived in May 1930. There have been many attempts to ban football, from the Middle Ages through to the modern day. The first such law was passed in England in 1314, it was followed by more than 30 in England alone between 1314 and 1667. Women were banned from playing at English and Scottish Football League grounds in 1921, a ban that was only lifted in the 1970s. Female footballers still face similar problems in some parts of the world. American football also faced pressures to ban the sport. The game played in the 19th century resembled mob football that developed in medieval Europe, including a version popular on university campuses known as Old Division Football, and several municipalities banned its play in the mid-19th century. By the 20th century, the game had evolved to a more rugby-style game. In 1905, there were calls to ban American football in the U.S. due to its violence, a meeting that year was hosted by American President Theodore Roosevelt led to sweeping rules changes that caused the sport to diverge significantly from its rugby roots to become more like the sport as it is played today. While football continued to be played in various forms throughout Britain, its public schools, equivalent to private schools in other countries, are widely credited with four key achievements in the creation of modern football codes. First of all, the evidence suggests that they were important in taking football away from its mob form and turning it into an organized team sport. Second, many early descriptions of football and references to it were recorded by people who had studied at these schools. Third, it was teachers, students, and former students from these schools who first codified football games to enable matches to be played between schools. Finally, it was at English public schools that the division between kicking and running, or carrying, games first became clear. The earliest evidence that games resembling football were being played at English public schools, mainly attended by boys from the upper, upper middle, and professional classes, comes from the Vulgaria by William Herman in 1519. Herman had been headmaster at Eton and Winchester Colleges and his Latin textbook includes a translation exercise with the phrase we wyll play with a ball full of wind. Richard Mulcaster, a student at Eton College in the early 16th century and later headmaster at other English schools, has been described as the greatest 16th century advocate of football. Among his contributions are the earliest evidence of organized team football. Mulcaster's writings refer to teams, sides and parties, positions, standings, a referee, judge over the parties, and a coach. Training Maester. Mulcaster's football had evolved from the disordered and violent forms of traditional football, some smaller number with such overlooking, sorted into sides and standings, not meeting with their bodies so boisterously to tree their strength, nor shuddering or shuffing one another so barbarously, may use football for as much good to the body, by the chief use of the legs. In 1633, David Wedderburn, a teacher from Aberdeen, mentioned elements of modern football games in a short Latin textbook called Vocabula. Wedderburn refers to what has been translated into modern English as keeping goal and makes an allusion to passing the ball, strike it here. There is a reference to a get hold of the ball, suggesting that some handling was allowed. It is clear that the tackles allowed included the charging and holding of opposing players, drive that man back. A more detailed description of football is given in Francis Willoughby's Book of Games, written in about 1660. Willoughby, who had studied at Bishop V.C.'s grammar school, Sutton Coldfield, is the first to describe goals and a distinct playing field, a close that has a gate at either end. The gates are called goals. His book includes a diagram illustrating a football field. He also mentions tactics, leaving some of their best players to guard the goal, scoring, they that can strike the ball through their opponent's goal first win, and the way teams were selected, the players being equally divided according to their strength and nimbleness. He is the first to describe a law of football, they must not strike an opponent's leg higher than the ball. English public schools were the first to codify football games. In particular, they devised the first offside rules, during the late 18th century. In the earliest manifestations of these rules, players were off their side if they simply stood between the ball and the goal which was their objective. Players were not allowed to pass the ball forward, either by foot or by hand. They could only dribble with their feet, or advance the ball in a scrum or similar formation. However, offside laws began to diverge and develop differently at each school, as is shown by the rules of football from Winchester, Rugby, Harrow, and Cheltenham, during between 1810 and 1850. 
The first known codes, in the sense of a set of rules, were those of Eden in 1815 and Aldenham in 1825. During the early 19th century, most working-class people in Britain had to work six days a week, often for over 12 hours a day. They had neither the time nor the inclination to engage in sport for recreation and, at the time, many children were part of the labor force. Feast day football. Played on the streets was in decline. Public school boys, who enjoyed some freedom from work, became the inventors of organized football games with formal codes of rules. Football was adopted by a number of public schools as a way of encouraging competitiveness and keeping youths fit. Each school drafted its own rules, which varied widely between different schools and were changed over time with each new intake of pupils. Two schools of thought developed regarding rules. Some schools favored a game in which the ball could be carried, as at Rugby, Marlborough, and Cheltenham, while others preferred a game where kicking and dribbling the ball was promoted, as at Eton, Harrow, Westminster, and Charterhouse. The division into these two camps was partly the result of circumstances in which the games were played. For example, Charterhouse and Westminster at the time had restricted playing areas, the boys were confined to playing their ball game within the school cloisters, making it difficult for them to adopt rough and tumble running games. William Webb Ellis, a pupil at rugby school, is said to have with a fine disregard for the rules of football, as played in his time, first, took the ball in his arms and ran with it, thus creating the distinctive feature of the rugby game in 1823. This act is usually said to be the beginning of rugby football, but there is little evidence that it occurred, and most sports historians believe the story to be apocryphal. The act of taking the ball in his arms is often misinterpreted as picking the ball up as it is widely believed. That Webb Ellis crime was handling the ball, as in modern association football, however handling the ball at the time was often permitted and in some cases compulsory. The rule for which Webb Ellis showed disregard was running forward with it as the rules of his time only allowed a player to retreat backwards or kick forwards. The boom in rail transport in Britain during the 1840s meant that people were able to travel farther and with less inconvenience than they ever had before. Interschool sporting competitions became possible. However, it was difficult for schools to play each other at football, as each school played by its own rules. The solution to this problem was usually that the match be divided into two halves, one half played by the rules of the host home school, and the other half by the visiting away school. The modern rules of many football codes were formulated during the mid or late 19th century. This also applies to other sports such as lawn bowls, lawn tennis, etc. The major impetus for this was the patenting of the world's first lawnmower in 1830. This allowed for the preparation of modern ovals, playing fields, pitches, grass courts, etc. Apart from rugby football, the public school codes have barely been played beyond the confines of each school's playing fields. However, many of them are still played at the schools which created them. Public schools' dominance of sports in the UK began to wane after the Factory Act of 1850, which significantly increased the recreation time available to working-class children. Before 1850, many British children had to work six days a week, for more than 12 hours a day. From 1850, they could not work before 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in winter, or after 6 p.m. on weekdays, 7 p.m. in winter, on Saturdays they had to cease work at 2 p.m. These changes meant that working-class children had more time